on the Hawkeye Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Hawkeye Sports Properties initial podcast. I'm Gary Dolphin of the Hawkeye Radio Network. And during these uncertain times with the Iowa campus, a ghost town shut down for athletics and academics because of the coronavirus. So we thought it prudent to stay in touch with the coaches and competitors and have you hear some of the familiar voices of reason at the university. So naturally our first update is with Iowa football coach, Kirk Ferentz. The Hawkeyes just 90 days removed from that electrifying holiday bowl victory over Southern California in San Diego. Think about it. We've lived through uh, President Kennedy's assassination, uh, Vietnam, uh, the terrorist attacks at the Munich Olympics, 9-11, the Wall Street crash of uh, 2008. But, you know, through all of those uh, uh, disasters, fans uh, had sports as a great escape from the the harsh reality of wars and recessions. And now this coronavirus pandemic, everyday life has just absolutely ground to a halt. You've, You've always projected a common sense, big picture approach and good times and bad. How have you, how have you handled the COVID-19 to date? Uh, you know, as you alluded to, it's just, it's unprecedented. And, uh, you know, two things I would point to, you mentioned nine 11, where there was a, a temporary stoppage of play baseball, football. Uh, but then we all, you know, we all got back to it, uh, you know, within whatever it would have been 10 day period, I guess, or, or maybe less than that. But, uh, you know that that comes to mind. Then I read uh, somebody somebody's account, which this this kind of struck a chord with me too, uh, about the uh, you know the oil crisis back in the '70s, and sports were still going on, but it, it impacted the entire nation. The gas lines, uh, you know, just brought out some really you know bad tough times for everybody, and it affected impacted everybody. But yeah, this one this one is just it's really truly unprecedented. I there's nothing that mirrors it exactly. And, you know, the other part of the equation right now is you know, none of us have any idea really what the months ahead um, are going to bring for us. And then when, when we do, in fact, uh, become safe as a country from a health standpoint, just what the economic uh, repercussions are going to be. So, you know, this is just I think we're just getting started. And that's, that's really concerning, certainly. On the field uh, or off the field, the NCAA recruiting uh, dead period uh, has been pushed back to May 31st, that from the original date of April 15th, and that continues to be a moving target. Uh, Spring football became a victim when all winter sports were canceled back in mid-March. So, Kirk, what are you doing from an operational standpoint in terms of uh, contact with players, recruits, and staff? You know, if you can... You're always looking for positives, and I guess if we're lucky in any regard, I don't know how you'd be lucky with this whole situation, but um, everything just started happening right, you know, immediately preceding the spring break. So uh, I believe it was that Wednesday night, which would have been the 11th. Uh, I think that's when the NBA mm-hmm. shut it down. Right. And then I believe it was the next day when the Big Ten basketball tournament got, you know, they pulled the plug on that. So things started happening pretty rapidly there. And, um, but I guess my point there is at least, you know, our players were all leaving campus. So they would have been off campus away from us anyway. So we had a week to put a plan together, I guess, in that regard. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, looking back three weeks ago, my plan was, I said, okay, you know, we just got to map this out for the next couple of weeks. Now we're talking about periods of months, but, uh, the bottom line is this, I think we're, our goal as a staff is to make sure our players are all situated they're they're wherever they are uh, most of them are in their homes uh some have come back to iowa city knowing that they you know the, the university is shut down the facilities all buildings are shut down so access is shut off there but i uh, just want to make sure wherever they were going to be or are going to be they're settled have what they need from a nutrition standpoint all those kinds of things and they're safe um and then second thing on the list is is the academic component which we started back to class this week. Uh, they took last week as a transitional week, eliminated a week from the semester. So we have a six week block now instead of a seven week post break. So uh, we just had an ac- academic meeting this morning, actually. Uh, everything's virtual, uh, as you might imagine. But mm-hmm. it sounds like the, the transition to online education has gone pretty well thus far. That's after three days of being back at it. So at least that, that part's gone fairly smoothly. And 
Uh, I joke about that, but probably the, the bigger trepidations on the side of the professors. I know I would have had more more issues probably than the, the uh, students who are in the classes. So it seems like that that uh, transition's gone okay. And then the third component uh, of interest right now is just you know encouraging our players to do all they can to uh, take care of themselves physically. And uh, in some ways, it's like the old days, you know, where guys used to leave uh, in May and not come back until August. But, but the big difference there is, you know, when they go home back in uh, when I was here in the 80s, they all had their high school gyms where they could go train in their high school uh, lifting centers. Um, and now that's that's really not an option. You know, all the schools are closed in their hometowns, so that's, that's not an option. Um, they don't have fitness clubs they can go to, so – you know, we've uh, tried to do our best to, to give design the strength of staff. It's done a good job of designing programs for the guys to follow based on whatever access they might have to whatever means. So, you know, it might mean, uh, you know, sandbags, you know, whatever it may be to, to try to have some semblance of strength and conditioning. But right along with that, just encouraging the guys to get in a routine. You know, they were doing a good job with their sleep, their nutrition, try to keep that up while they're all, you know, living independently right now. Our visit with Iowa football coach Kirk Ferentz is brought to you by U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank is proud to support our team and the communities it serves during these challenging times by providing critical frontline employees with a temporary 20% hourly wage increase and by committing $30 million to human services organizations and local nonprofits to support COVID-19 recovery efforts. U.S. Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Uh, Spring football has had a a staggered calendar. It always does. Some Big Ten schools were a couple weeks in, others a couple days. The Hawkeyes never got out of the gate. Typically, Iowa, you start in late March and conclude in late April. How do officials correct that imbalance when football does resume? I'm sure that's a conversation that they'll have if they're not having already. You know, that was a thought I had a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, just how we can handle this. And, um, but that, that's also at a time where I was kind of envisioning us maybe getting back mid April, uh, at the latest May. And then, you know, how do you, how do you, uh, balance out an unbalanced equation? So, you know, since that time, I, I think right now to, to even think about, uh, seeing our athletes and, and, uh, students back on campuses, uh, probably anytime between before June is probably just a pipe dream in itself. So, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, if that would be the case and that's really optimistic, then I think, you know, maybe you can come up with a balance uh, for those who are completed or, you know, two-thirds of the way done. They they don't have many opportunities or any opportunities with their players where maybe those of us who didn't start or were only a week into it get X amount of opportunities. But I've got to tell you, my, my sense is this is probably going to push later than that and we'll all be up against it just, to, you know, trying to – get ready for the season if, if in fact that that is a reality so you know at this point it's almost like any possible uh, scenarios on the table and you just kind of have to map that out but if, if, if by some you know good fortune we're able to get back may june then i think they have to work that equation out and try to try to come up with a fair way to to address it. Yeah, fair point. More with Coach Ferentz in just a moment. Our partner, Athletico Physical Therapy, remains open to safely provide physical and occupational therapy treatment options in clinic and online during COVID-19. Delaying treatment could mean additional expenses and prolonged pain. Visit athletico.com. That's A T H L E. TICO.com request an appointment in clinic or virtually through a secure online video chat via FaceTime or Zoom today and start feeling better tomorrow. Uh, you know, I was thinking you, you and Mary watched your five kids participate in winter sports, uh, basketball, wrestling, swimming and diving. And as a parent, uh, you know, your heart has to bleed for people like Luca Garza and Kathleen Doyle, Spencer Lee and the hundreds of others that were denied uh, postseason competition. Uh, something, as you know, that is never guaranteed uh, year to year. Yeah, needless to say, you feel bad for the spring athletes, you know, and, and many of them, you know, the, the seasons were just starting to get underway in, in earnest. But, you know, their, their training began, you know, months ago. So uh, I think that's one thing. Sometimes as fans, we uh, are just nomenclature people. You, you lose sight of the fact that, um, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into this, uh, both the individual training, the out-of-season training, and then you know, our baseball, softball teams, they started uh, teamworks, you know, I imagine February. 
Uh, maybe it was later, June, January, I guess, probably. So there's a lot of work that goes into uh, a team getting ready before they actually hit the game field or game competition. And, and uh, so you feel badly for them. At least the NCAA has given seniors an opportunity to come back and repeat uh, next year. But yeah, I really, really felt terribly for you know our men's and women's basketball teams and and then our wrestling team. You know, doing a great job at the Big Ten tournament, being in prime position to you know have an opportunity to win the NCAA championship and then extend it beyond that. The and you know the individuals involved, uh, whether it's you know Luca Garza, Kathleen, Catherine Doyle, or um, you think about you know guys like Spencer, uh, Spencer Lee, and you know just all those guys that have had such great years and were. Uh, had an opportunity to become national champions or, or certainly, uh, you know, all Americans. So, uh, yeah, just so much invested so far down the road, just on the verge of really doing some really neat things as teams and as individuals. So you really, you just feel so badly for, for all those guys, those folks. And, um, again, you think about the, the work they invested, uh, into it. So it's, it's just really unfortunate. Lastly, uh, Coach Ferentz, uh, if uh, a lot of people like me like to dive back into uh, uh, history uh, and uh, kind of take a break or, or uh, avoid dealing with the, the uh, bad negative issues of the day. And I was going through some uh, some old programs this week and I landed on five years ago. I can't believe it's five years since uh, the 2015 uh, run of 12-0 uh, and 0 with C.J. Beathard at the throttle uh, Kanziri and Wadley running up and down the field, James Daniels, Austin Blythe, Kittle and Krieger Koble. And then defensively, uh, Drew Ott was battling some injuries, but he was still the leader of that unit with Jaleel Johnson and Josie and Ben Neiman. That, that pulse-stopping Big Ten title game with Michigan State down in Indianapolis, uh, what great memories of that year in general. Yeah, it is. First of all, you're right. It's hard to believe it was five years ago. Yeah, and I'll start out with, uh, you mentioned the championship game. Still, still one of the best games uh, I can remember ever being involved with. It just, you know, every play was so critical, and um, you know, it just went right down to the wire. And I've told our team this before, but um, yeah, it's interesting. You know, we went 12 and 0 that season, and then unfortunately lost the championship game. And, and I had more compliments nationally from people, you know, friends or acquaintances uh, from across the country, not just in the Midwest, or certainly not just in Iowa. Uh, but more compliments about our team and, and the way they competed uh, during that loss than I did for many of the 12 victories that we had. So, you know, you bring back some great memories, uh, not necessarily the championship game, but what an environment, what a game that was. And that is, that, that is what you, you know, you, you hope for. You hope to have an opportunity to, to compete at that level in such a great arena. But uh, yeah, you talk about that season, what a year and, I, I always go back to, to me, the turning point was that Northwestern game right right before our bye week uh, where we were pretty much limped in into uh, Evanston with, you know, a team that was really, uh, really limited physically. And then it got worse when Kanzuri got hurt right in the you know, first quarter, I believe it was. So just a real example of uh, whether it's C.J. Beathard out there playing probably at 50%, really immobile, you know, just really gotten it up and playing the best he could. Um, you think about guys like Wadley uh, stepping in and then taking over when Kanzari was out, and just uh, that, but that, that's what teamwork's all about, you know. Guys uh, sacrificing, working hard, and giving everything they have to uh, benefit the team. So, yeah, it's hard to believe that was five years ago. What uh, nothing but great memories from that season, that group of players, and uh, we've had a lot of other good memories uh, over the last five years as well. So, just feel really fortunate from that regard. And, uh, fast forward to you know last time we're out there uh, for the guys to, to do the job they did the way they did in California just really proud of them as a group and as a team and you know they, what a great season it was but yeah you know, what a strong way to finish and uh, clearly the 2019 team played their best down the stretch November and in, in the bowl game so just really proud of them proud of the leadership we got hopefully an opportunity to make more great memories uh, coming up in the months ahead but Coach, we uh, appreciate your visit on this podcast. Uh, Hawk fans are starving for anything black and gold, and, and I thought it would be a great opportunity to get you on the horn. So we'll, uh, we'll do it again, and hopefully uh, the outlook is much brighter when next we visit. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. Yeah, just a week and a half ago, we were going to have our pro day the Monday, first Monday after the break. Uh, there are no pro days anywhere right now, and uh, we would have been, uh, I guess, uh, five practices into it now. 
from a, from a football standpoint. So we've missed those opportunities, but uh, it's like everything else, you know, you hate to miss the sports part of things. And, um, you know, nobody wants to miss this coming season and hopefully that won't be the case, but uh, you know, there's such bigger issues right now that are looming right out, out there. And just to, again, want to encourage everybody to do their part. Hopefully everybody's doing their part to, flatten this curve out as best they can and move this process along so we can have a season and not not that that's the primary goal the bigger goal is just get our country back uh, up and running again and um you know everybody getting back to a some semblance of normalcy because uh, you know this is just it's, it's really a challenging time for everybody kirk thanks we'll talk again my pleasure Jerry. thank you Thanks to Coach Ferentz for his time today on our first podcast. Stay with us. We'll have more down the road for Hawk fans uh, and beyond. Our next update will come from Iowa Athletic Director uh, Gary Barta. He'll give us an even bigger picture of what's going on with the NCAA and the University of Iowa. Till then, I'm Gary Dolphin for the Hawkeye Radio Network. Have a great day.